Hi everyone, it's Diane. I am going to be starting a very simple project of making, putting two plain journals together for someone. And I thought it would be fun for you to come along and see a very simple journal. It'll make it, I think it'll make it simpler to see how it's put together. There will be no decorating, no pockets, because she wants to do all of that herself. So, my friend Jennifer from Fabric Thread Needle um, asked me if I would do this. She had all the supplies and she wants books to give for Christmas presents. And uh, so she sent me the covers and coffee dyed pages. She even did the coffee dyeing. And all I have to do is make the signatures and sew them into the books. I'll have to uh, reconstruct the spines and get them sent back to her and then she will do all the decorating. So I thought it would be fun to just do these simple books together. Along with sending me all of the supplies, she also sent me some more fabric, um, feedback fabrics. Look at this one. I love that. But I just love the feedback fabrics. They're so much fun and there's so many different designs. This one is very different. And if you've been watching my videos, you've seen me using the Feedtack fabrics quite a bit in my journal creations <coughs> in various ways. So thank you so much, Jennifer. <laughs> Look at that one. And she also sent me, I don't have it right here, but um, the large vintage music magazine called The Etude. She sent me a copy of that too, which is really awesome. So thank you, Jennifer. So these are the two books she sent. I'm going to start on this one. <clears throat> I, I cut the papers last night to size. Um, what I'll do for the cover right now is just to clean it off. I usually just take a baby wipe and clean the surface dirt off. I don't worry too much about stains like this. It's a vintage book and you're going to have stains but I do want to get the surface dirt off. You can see it gets, it gets the baby wipe dirty. So I don't need to clean that because I'm going to take that off. I think I'll need a bigger spine than that and I'm not too sure that that would be sturdy enough anyway. So I'm going to make a new spine But I'll do that after I get the pages ready to sew in because that'll help me see how big I want how big I want it. I usually have it all decorated. Oh, I can get some of that off. Um, like all the pockets and tags and everything in the pages before I make a new spine because I want to make sure that it's big enough. But with this one, it won't have all of that. So I will just uh, make it bigger than it looks like it needs to be so that she can add stuff. Okay, so this is going to be a very stained cover. <clears throat> so I cleaned it, cleaned the dirt off it, and I'm just going to set it aside for now. I've already measured the, the cover so that I have the pages already cut, except I didn't cut the music paper that she sent because um, my paper trimmer wouldn't cut this uh, vintage paper. I'll have to do that with scissors. She sent um, two pages of these stamps, vintage stamps, so I can include them, and this catalog page, Sears Roebuck. And then the rest is um, scrapbook paper. Some of it is the cardstock type, the heavier. A lot of it is the heavier. So these are going to be thick books and she coffee dyed them so that makes them crinkly. I don't think that they were oven dried though because they're not as wrinkly and bent as they are, you know, crispy. But it just may be because they're cardstock pieces. So what I'm doing is these are the cardstock pieces that are double sided. This one is single sided.
just so I can kind of intersperse them. This is a thinner paper. I also cut some of the pieces long to fold a flap over. <coughs> Sorry. And some of them I cut with more um, height than they need so that I can have a fold up pocket. I think that's double sided. That one's double sided. Oh, that's a thinner one. <clears throat> Isn't that pretty? It's very different. I like that. And I love this one. She has quite an eclectic mix of um, designs, um, styles of paper. There's some Tim Holtz. Whoops, that's double sided. got this, um, I think this is DCWV, but it's the Jane Austen pack. It's quite sturdy. There's some Graphic 45. I don't think this is Graphic 45. That might be from the Jane Austen pack. And this is Bow Bunny. I love this. Okay, so it's mostly the heavier cardstock paper. So I will choose um, a double sided cardstock piece to be the front of each signature, one that's not extra space. I love this one, so I think this will be the beginning of one of the signatures. So I'm just going to fold that. I think I'll make this one the beginning of a signature. And this one. All right, so those are the signature beginnings. So I'm right now, I'm just going to fold the paper. So this might be boring for you to watch. Let me turn this a little bit. <clears throat> but I, um, I can chat. Sorry, I can chat while I fold. Let's see, I had to cut this paper at not quite 10 inches, so I, I don't want it, after I fold this flap, I don't want it to be more than 10 inches. So I'm going to, you can't even see me, I'm going to score it at 9.5 right here and fold this flap in, and then when I fold the paper, it should be the right size. Yeah, just a little bit of space there, which is just what I wanted. So it will just have a flap. If she wants to turn it into a pocket, she can. I'll do this one while I got the board here. So I want the paper, most of the papers were cut ten, um, nine and three quarters. So I'm cutting this at nine and a half just to make sure. So once the flap is folded in, the paper is nine and a half. And then you just fold it like you do the other ones. use the board some more when I get to the other sets of paper. Let 
Use my bone folder on these heavier pieces. I saved all of the cutoff pieces and she can use them for adding pockets and other embellishments. Um, I don't think that Jennifer was aware of junk journals. I may be wrong, but I think that after I purchased feed sack fabric from her and started communicating with her and telling her what I was using the feed sack fabrics for, she started watching videos about junk journals and just loves them. And she's been collecting uh, vintage ephemera. In fact, she had some vintage ephemera in her shop. But she hasn't, I don't think she's made one yet. She's super busy. She has a lot going on with her feed sack fabrics. You know, getting them ready to sell and everything. <clears throat> so she uh, just asked me if I would make the journals and then she could just decorate them. So that works out great. I'm not sure if I will leave all of the flat pages I may once I start um, putting signatures together I may decide to cut some of the flaps off but once you cut the paper to size it's harder to put a flap back on than it is to just take it off Okay, now it looks like, all right, I think I wanted this to be a fold up pocket, so I should have cut off that part that I didn't. height of the pages is, I, had, I did two different books and they're both slightly different, seven and a quarter. So I want to fold the bottom of this up so that the page measures seven and a quarter or less. I'll do it slightly less. So fold that up and then Fold it over. Oh, this is a quite sturdy paper, so I'm going to score it. Find the center. So this won't work to be a fold down unless, whoops, sorry, this won't work to just fold it down as a flap unless I cut it in the center because it will be stitched in. So I will uh, make this into a pocket. She said it was up to me whether I wanted to do pockets or not, but she knows I'm busy, so she said she would be happy to just put the pockets in herself. She has the supplies to do it with. have to ask her before I upload this video if it's okay because the people that she's giving these journals to for Christmas I don't know if they watch YouTube I don't want them to have a hint that they might be getting a journal for Christmas really heavy too. Well, it 
didn't have that didn't score it right in the middle but if that is too long I can just turn it off It's a pretty page. The pile's getting pretty thick. So, I, we celebrated my grandson's birthday, Sunday, yesterday. He's Teddy. You may have seen him in my videos. He likes to be in my videos. He loves junk journals. But he's eight years old now. And his cousin Layla, my granddaughter, is going to be eight next month. And they are the babies. I can't believe they're eight already. So we had a dinner, a lunch here, with just my, my kids and grandkids. And, you know their families and they had fun they had gone um, on Saturday which was his real birthday they went to a trampoline park in Bestel New York and I didn't go but I got to see pictures and it looks like a lot of fun there are trampolines for the kids to jump on but they're all connected it's hard to describe. And then there were other things where they were, I think they were on like a balance beam type of thing over a trampoline or, oh, oh I guess it was over a um, great big sponge or, or foam cubes, like a ball pit, but it was big um, foam cubes instead of balls. And they had these foam like big bolsters that they were supposed to try to knock each other off the balance beam board, so they had a lot of fun with that. And then they went for pizza afterwards, so that was a good day for them. Okay, pages are all folded. If you stuck with me for that, thank you. Now I'm going to arrange the pages. I want three signatures. <clears throat> I'll do the pages and then I'll add those extras. She gave me the catalog page, the music pages, and the stamps. But I'll arrange these pages first. These are the heavier ones. Let's see. This one I didn't cut right, obviously, because it's taller than everything else. I'm going to have to trim that. These are the paper ones. These are double sided. Is that all that's double sided? I think I got them mixed up a little. That's okay. All right. Usually I have coffee dyed just plain copy paper, but she didn't send me any of that, and there's enough paper here. I think there will be something like 10 pages per signature plus the music and catalog and stuff. So that's a lot. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just start. I have one, two, three, four, five of the thinner papers. I'm going to call that one of them. 
because it's not as heavy as cardstock. So I can put two thinner papers in each signature. One, two, three, four, five, six, looking for the ones that have flaps. Okay, so each signature will get one of those flap papers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not arranging them in any um, color order. And you see how much they stick out here once they get into the middle of the signature. I'll have to trim some of that. Or I think I would anyway because they stick out too much because the papers are so thick. But I could also just sew some lace to the front. I don't think she would mind if I did that embellishment to kind of hide the uneven unevenness, but I will definitely trim some off. Okay, sorry. So there's one. One, two, three, four, five, They both have flaps. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. many flaps are in here. <clears throat> Must be I only made one with the fold up page. I thought I had more than that. Okay, I'm going to cut some of the flaps off because that's more flaps than I need. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine. This one really has nine. Okay, so I definitely have to do some trimming. That's the one I cut too tall. And I have to trim some of those edges, which I will do. You don't need to watch me do that. And I need to include some of these pieces. So there's only two of these. I'll put one in the signature that that only has which one? <laughs> which one's the last one I did? I think it was this one. Eight, nine, yep. I'll just stick this in here and see how it fits. Definitely have to trim that. Okay. So the one that doesn't have stamps can have a catalog page. I don't think my trimmer will trim this either. It'll just tear it. So what I'm going to do is mark it at, oh, let's say six inches. It doesn't need to be the full height of the page. I'm just going to mark it there and then lay my ruler there and tear it. 
to give it a deckle edge. I'll give her this too. She can make embellishments with this. And it'll probably need to be cut narrower. I'm going to trim it to four inches. each have a music sheet. I'll probably have to reinforce where I fold it because this is vintage paper and I don't want to take the chance that it's going to um, tear down the center once I sew it. Make this one four inches too. So I wonder what you're all up to. Are you getting ready for Thanksgiving? I'm just having my kids and grandkids here my family is so big. I had six siblings. I did have six siblings. And my parents are still living. And of course, the siblings all have grown and married children with children. So we're quite a gang. So we don't do the holiday dinners at anybody's house. We used to all get together for holiday dinners, but we just can't do that anymore. There's too many of us. So last year, I hosted a New Year's Day get-together because it wasn't a sit-down dinner. And whoever could come, some of the grown children that are out of town couldn't come, but anybody who could come came. And then you just, you know, fill your plate up with whatever snacks you want and find a place to sit. <laughs> but <clears throat> the big dinners, like Christmas and Thanksgiving, we just do with our own kids or wherever, whatever we can manage. So I'm having my two children and their spouses and children here for Thanksgiving. I'm making the turkey and the stuffing and a pie and other things and they're going to bring what they want to bring. Somebody, my son's doing the mashed potatoes, which is my least favorite thing to do for the Thanksgiving dinner, so I'm glad he's doing that. I didn't need to draw that the whole way down. Okay, so that about does it. I will find places to tuck these in, and I will trim up the papers, and then I'll, be, I'll come back for the next stage. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back. Bye-bye.